The successful deployment of 5G requires significant changes to mobile network architectures. Matthias, how does 5G and how will 5G shape the design and architecture of your network in the Netherlands? It's a very good question. Thank you for the discussion. Um, I think the journey started already some years ago, I would say. Um, because uh, we decided in the Netherlands to move very quickly into NFV. Uh, so we started to virtualize, uh, for example, our whole Volti solution. So Volti in Vodafone Netherlands is completely virtualized. Uh, actually, we have at the moment 40% of our voice customers already on, sitting on this platform. And this was for us the first step into the new world. And actually, this was also for us the starting point paving the way towards 5G. And the next big endeavor which we will have is the deployment of a virtual EPC where actually we will start to develop technologies which we will need in order to deliver 5G later on to our customers. Um, in order to do this we started as we speak uh, the onboarding of Red Hat OpenStack on a common infrastructure. On top of it we are onboarding the first applications for our virtual EPC and we will go live as the virtual EPC by end of this year. And actually, this will enable us to deliver CUPS, which is the separation of control and user plane, which is one of the steps which you need in order to create solutions, particularly for enterprise customers. And on top of it, it will enable network slicing, which is one of the key technologies within 5G. So you're architecting the network with, with a view that vertical industries, enterprise customers are going to be a, a major component of the business moving forward. Exactly. This is actually what we are going to do. First things we see already now taking or getting into shape with current 4G technologies. So we will develop also the first slicing use cases to enterprise customers already by end of this year, which is still under the umbrella of 4G. And nevertheless, it's paving the way towards 5G. So, and this is actually also what is quite unique now, uh, deploying 5G technologies, because many, many things we do as we speak. And yes, it's part of the 5G ecosystem. You virtualize network functions. We start to, or we started actually to deploy NB-IoT. NB-IoT is, I think GSMA decided two weeks ago that NB-IoT is part of the 5G ecosystem. We have nationwide indoor NB-IoT coverage as of now. By June, we will have nationwide CAT-M coverage in the Netherlands, which is also considered to be part of the 5G ecosystem. So you see, actually 5G technology is here and now, and uh, it's an evolution this time and not a real revolution. You were early in your um, embracing of NFE. Um, it's been a difficult journey for a lot of people. Um, there's a lot of arguments at the moment as to whether NFE has achieved what it, what it should achieve. Um, has it got us to this telco cloud stage or not? What have been some of the lessons that, that, you, that you've learned? Are you, are you satisfied with, with, with what you've got and how it, you're deploying it? Or is there still a lot more work to be done? <laughs> Actually, it's twofold. Uh, on the one hand, I'm super satisfied uh, because it really delivers what we expected the technology to deliver. So we got more efficiency on the hardware side, so we're not buying monolithic hardware anymore. So we have one platform, we have a geo-redundant platform, actually we build it in three data centers, fully geo-redundant. We onboard our applications there, we do it for networks and IT as well. So we create efficiencies, that's the first thing. The second thing is we standardize. Still, we use common infrastructure from HPE, but still we standardize. So we build a framework, we build an ecosystem around it in order to deliver carrier create applications. And this is, I think, something what you ha still have to do because customers expect you to deliver carrier create. They don't expect you to try and or error certain things and then don't get uh, the customer experience to the customers which they expect you to deliver to them. Um, but this is the, the bright side of the story to say. But there's also, I would not say the opportunity side, not the dark side, the opportunity side. And this is, we need to automate, we need to orchestrate. In order to prepare ourselves for 5G, we need to get a domain orchestration, we need to get it right, together with SDN, we need to have end-to-end -end service orchestration in order really to stitch enterprise services together in a very automated way, but still to connect it to your BSS OSS system and to your portals, so that actually it's a seamless story for your customer. And this is still something where I think everybody in the industry is in the exploration phase. It's not a phase where we can say, you go to the Lego box, you take one piece, you deploy it, and it will work. 
So this is a bit the challenge, but all the NFV brings really what we expected NFV to bring. And also our customers, I mean, they get the service, but the service is rock solid, very efficient for us. So it's a win-win situation for both sides. So, so picking up on this, so pick and mix approach in, in a way that, that telcos have the opportunity to, to, to do now, this rise in open networking and open source software and open specified hardware, um, You've already said that you're implementing OpenStack um, in your solution. How are the, the challenges with the um, open source community and approaches to, to work? I mean, it's quite a, it's quite a cultural shift for, for, for telcos. It's absolutely a cultural shift. Um, and it's also somehow a bit challenging for us uh, to embrace it, uh, to work together with different partners, actually partners who are more used to work with the IT world and not with the networks world. So, and we have to force them into, again, something rock solid, stable, with a framework, able to deliver according to certain SLAs and KPIs. It's one thing. The other thing is what we also see that our hardware vendors, software vendors like an Ericsson and Huawei or whoever, they tend then to take an OpenStack version and to customize. And this is something what in our market we deliberately decided not to take because they have their own flavors of OpenStack, for example. We don't like this. We go for vanilla because we want to be as open as possible. However, we want to understand it. We want to understand the APIs. We want also our partners to open the APIs so that we can understand that we can connect it to BSS OSA systems. And uh, this is the challenge. But nevertheless, I think it's, it's needed because when you want to automate, I think, at least for us, the OpenStack way is the right way forward. So this is a bit the thing there. But again, it's, it's, we are, I would say, at the beginning of the journey. We will explore still and find uh, new things. So one year from now, maybe you can have a different chat on this. Sure. <laughs> there we are. We are at the beginning of the journey. Um, what's your advice and what, what do you say to your, your vendors, either your established vendors or, 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 or new vendors? Um, what, 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 what do you need them to do for you to make your life easier? Yeah, the first thing is really embrace the open stack, embrace the community, contribute to the community, build your application cloud native, which would help us later on to automate, to work with containers, with microservices, and which would enable us to deliver complete new service to our enterprise, particularly enterprise customers. So, I, and I think this is something what everybody expects us to do. And we need our vendors to help us on this journey, to get us there, to move forward, and to embrace the challenge. Thais, thank you very much indeed for joining us on Telecom TV. Thank you.